Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of Penn Live's Penn State Blue White Breakdown, our football podcast. I'm Bob Flounders, joined by Greg Pickle, who is gulping water by uh, in, at an accelerated rate. It is warm out, so Greg, um, I hope your fluids you keep them up. I don't want you cramping up. You have to take Lola, your golden retriever, for a do- for a walk later today. So make sure you're good and hydrated. Greg, we have another busy week. Penn State is now entering its second week of spring practice. There's going to be some uh, availabilities coming up. But we're going to focus on two things. You had a chance to talk to some players on Monday uh, about uh, the return to spring practice and maybe the impact on having spring practice. Penn State didn't have it last year. And also Penn State's pro day is scheduled for Thursday, the 25th. Um, There's going to be, I believe, eight Nittany Lions working out. I'll be curious to see how many teams are up there. They've got a lot of players who could go. Not a lot, but they have a few players who could go. Early in the draft, led by Harrisburg High School graduate Micah Parsons. Uh, The media is not necessarily allowed up there, but they're going to make the players available to us after the workouts, or at least that's the plan. So, Greg, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Bob. It's nice to have actual football to talk about this time of year after uh, what we went through at this time of year last year. That's a plus. In a big, big way. And you're right. Spring practice continues. Um, you know, I guess the the most interesting thing from the takeaways that we've heard from the coaches and players so far is that we kind of just have to take them at their word, right? Because we can't yeah. we yeah. can't get in to see it. So that's a different way of going about things this year compared to most. Yep. Uh, agree with that 100%. Uh, before I ask you about uh, one of the players you had a chance to talk to, uh, I just got to ask how how goes your March Madness? Uh, Not well. Watching and you may be prognosticating. It was a pretty crazy four days of the tournament. No, very few, very few teams were safe in terms of seeding. Illinois got beat. I think Michigan got through. Gonzaga got through, and Baylor got through. So there's still three number ones. But was it as rough on you as it probably was on most of the country? Yes, yes, it was, Bob. Um, <laughs> It was tough uh, to say the least. I mean, it's just some of the, some of the outcomes in these games. I I just, yeah. Kudos to anyone who predicted some of them. I I just don't know how you got to a few of those upsets Uh, and maybe uh, not to completely uh, take this in a Dave Jones direction on the the blue white breakdown, Bob, but maybe Micah Shrewsbury's not walking into such a tough big 10 as we thought during the regular season. Um, No, I, I mean, I guess I, it's hard for me to throw away everything the Big Ten did yeah. during the year because of how bad the tournament's been. But it's certainly been bad. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and I guess I can't remember. Was Shrewsbury hired, Bob, the last time we did a podcast? I don't know if we've covered that or if you and Dave covered Boy, that. But. Uh, we when I, when Dave and I talked, I think it was specifically about the tournament. And we also talked about. Uh, I think Shrewsbury might have been hired on Friday, and I think Dave and I talked on Thursday, but he talked – if anyone listened to last week's podcast with Dave and I, I you you were listening in. It was quite a basketball segment there yes. at the end, and it was about March Madness, but also about Penn State and his thoughts on it. And I still thought it was a really interesting conversation. Dave is very, very passionate about basketball, about Penn State basketball, and uh, – when we have him on again, Greg, I will. I, I believe he's had a chance to talk to to Micah and some people who know him. I'll get his. We'll get his thoughts uh, when he returns. Hopefully, he'll keep them within an hour of uh, you know. We, our window is only so big. I'll try and keep it to like fifteen minutes. We'll see. But no, we haven't had a chance to talk about Micah Shrewsbury. Uh, another name that begins with an M is Mike, as in Mike Miranda, Penn State's veteran offensive lineman. Uh, you were on a conference call, a Zoom call with him on Monday. To me, Mike Miranda, I would make a case that Mike Miranda is easily one of the most two or three most underrated players, I think, on this Lions roster. I think what he does is invaluable. Left guard last year, uh, second team, all Big Ten, um, also knows how to play center. And I think that's what really enhances his value on the college level. And I think it's really going to help him 
at the next level. I would imagine a year from now, we'll be talking about him and his pro day. But Greg, he's a guy that could help Penn State at two or three positions on the offensive line. I'm sure he has earned the trust of second-year line coach Phil Troutwine and James Franklin for the year that he had um, in 2020. He's, he's kind of paid his dues. He's worked his way up the depth chart. W- what were some of the takeaways you had maybe from your chat with Mike? Yeah, I mean, I think a couple of things stood out. Number one, he obviously is working at center and guard uh, during spring practice here. And look, they can go a couple of different ways there. They could leave Mike Miranda at guard and uh, move Juice Scruggs to starting center. They could do the inverse of that and move Miranda to center and keep Juice Scruggs at guard. So they're going to figure that out uh, over the course of these 15 practices. And of course, camp, I mean, I think that Miranda's probably going to end up being the starter at center, but you're right. I mean, I think he does get overlooked on this roster. I think he does sometimes um, get forgotten about, and he's done some really nice things and played a lot of football so far at Penn State. So um, no, that's a good point there. And he was just talking yesterday, and a couple other guys did, Jake Pinnegar and and Brenton Strange as well, just about the fact that, you know, I'm sure spring practice can be a grind, not quite like summer camp, but, you know, it's still – you're not too far removed from the season. You just mm-hmm. went through this long winter workout period once classes started again. And now you're putting the pads back on and hitting each other. And, you know, these practices are obviously big on fundamentals and instruction and the basics. And I, I don't want to say that they're boring for the older guys, but I'm sure to some extent they are redundant in a lot of ways. So um, they can probably be a bit of a slog, but you know, it's one that all these guys I think are really happy to be going through right now because they didn't have this chance last year. And, you know, I got the chance to ask uh, him just basically, it's an obvious question with an obvious answer, but can you really put into words how much further you are along now yeah. with Mike Yersich's offense compared to when you were putting in an offense with Kirk Sharaka through zoom and all of that. And, I mean, just the ability for Mike Yersich to tap somebody on the shoulder and say, hey, look, you're not doing that right. Or, hey, look, you need to be um, an inch this way or an inch that way. I mean, I just think that there was obviously a lot more wrong with Penn State last year than just missing spring practice and all of the weird ways they had to practice later in the year because of the pandemic and all that. But I'm hard pressed to believe that just and this is goes for everyone across college football, but that they won't be somewhat improved just simply because of the fact that they got this opportunity that starts, uh, you know, it's second week here as we talk on Tuesday. Yeah, and just to wrap up the conversation about Penn State's 2021 center and Mike Miranda's value, Greg, <clears throat> I think the fan base, let's just remind the fan base that what, what James Franklin and his offensive line coaches have done during his time, mm-hmm. they have they they have shown a, a willingness to move a player to center from another position. Connor McGovern uh, started as a true freshman in 2016 yeah. uh, uh, as a guard. They moved him to center the following year. Michael Menick was a reserve guard. They moved him to center. And he ended up being, I believe, a three-year starter, 2018, 2019, 2020. So the evidence is out there, Greg. They're not afraid to do it. They, I think they see a correlation between if they have the skill set and they, they, they have the te- technique and they have the trust of the quarterback. Center is a very important position. Yeah. And I think that I think I would be surprised if it wasn't Mike Miranda, just because he's a veteran. And he, he told me last year before the start of the season – that he considers himself a starter as a guard or a center. So I don't think anyone will be too surprised if James Franklin, you know, in the summer puts out that depth chart and it's Mike Miranda probably at center and maybe Juice Scrubs will be somewhere at guard. Greg, let's move along to pro day Thursday in state college. Just let's talk a little bit about the eight guys that are going to be there. Let's see if we can remember them all. Uh, You could, you could start obviously Micah and Fryermuth and Jason Owe are going to be there. Can you name the other five for the fans? Oh, let's see. Um, I imagine Shaka Tony is going to be there. Yeah. Uh, so that's what? One more. Do I <laughs> think? I had the worst part of this was, was I had that list in front of me. Bob, I know. And then I yeah, actually Will, exited Will, Will, out. Will Fries. Michael Mennett. Michael Mennett. So how many is that? We always, um, we always forget one. And this is where I probably shouldn't ask you questions. You don't know the 
answers to, but it's, it's two offensive linemen. It's two. Oh, uh, I think Shane Simmons would probably be in there as well because he's a senior. He I'm is not. He's him. moving on to his uh, football career. Bob, I, here, let me tell you this. So I'm on we way. got Friar Muth, We or I mean, he's moving on to his business career. We got Friar Muth, We got Fries. We got Mennett. Jason Awe, Micah Parsons, Shaka Tony. Okay. There's uh-huh. two left. One that you should be able to get. One that I really would be surprised if you get. And I'll give you a couple of seconds. All right. Is one of them Lamont Wade? That, yes, that's the one you should get. Yes. Okay, it's, it's another one, uh, a speedy wideout that played special teams? No. All right. All right. This is going to be a hard – all right, just give me – give me. does he play offense or defense? Offense. Oh, no. Uh, boy, this is where it looks – all right, you better just – we're probably boring people to death. Who did I miss out on? Steven Gonzalez is coming back for another oh! – because he didn't I don't know there was any way I was getting Steven No, you, you were not getting there. So, yeah, so it's Pat Fryermuth, Will Fry, Steven Gonzalez, Michael Bennett, Jason Awe, Micah Parsons, Shaka Tony, and Lamont Wade. Yeah. Um, <laughs> clearly, it's going to be fascinating to watch these guys. Well, we won't get to watch them, but the pro, the NFL people will, and I'm sure Penn State social media people will, the in-house ones. But, um, yeah. you know, these guys are going to put on a show. Uh, no combine, no problem, I think, for most of them. But, you know, clearly I think I'd be interested to see, and we won't know the complete answer to this, but Will Fries and Michael Mennett, if they test well, when you talk about underrated guys, Bob, I think those two are often overlooked. So yeah. I can see them working their way into a draft slot that's higher than people think. And maybe the same with Lamont Wade, too. I, you know, they. He, I, the one thing with Lamont Wade that I'll probably never be able to get over is – what we saw him do on special teams towards the end of the 2020 season and yeah. why he never got more of an opportunity to do that. Yeah. To me, the guy that fascinates me, first of all, I anticipate they always, they always test well. They almost always test well at Penn state. I can imagine both Jason Awe and Micah Parsons trending socially. If they run anywhere near their best times that they ran at Penn state, you just don't see, human beings, you know, put together like they are move that fast. And I will say this, I, I, when I watched Micah at Penn state, I always kind of felt like he played to, you know, there's football speed and there's, 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 I guess, track speed and there's, there's football speed. I always thought his, his speed translated to the football field. He could, when he got going, he could move, he could get somewhere in a hurry. I think he's absolutely a threat to run in the four fours. I'm more. I'm just as fascinated by Jason because they. I saw a picture of him recently working out in California. I mean, the guy's got to have less than five percent body fat. It's just incredible uh, what he's been able to do. I think they'll both test well. The guy that I'm most anxious to see though is Shaka Tony, because they they he he was at the Senior Bowl. They tried him covering receivers. I think down there, there might be some versatility that could help him maybe as a hybrid defender, everyone's going in the hybrid uh, direction on offense and defense. I think if he can run pretty well and he puts up some good, uh, you know, strength numbers, if he can show some versatility, I think he can really help himself at pro day as well. Greg. Yeah. I don't think there's any doubt about that, Bob. And the fascinating thing about what Parsons and and these guys are going to do is that they put up some freakish numbers. If we're to believe the Penn state uh, self (laughs) Reduced testing numbers, which I do, because uh, Dwight got yeah. those guys. I mean, you would question them if these guys didn't put up some freaky numbers during their uh, time yeah. at Penn State, and then put up pretty much the same thing or better at the combine events, so or pro day. So I trust those, and those guys are putting up some scary things while training for games and building their body for a season and all that. And I'm not saying they've stopped doing that, Bob, but. Let's be honest, they've spent a few weeks and a few months training for these specific set of drills. And that, I think, could make some of these results even more incredible than what even we expect them to be. Yeah. And I just remember you, I was talking to Etor Gross Matos right before the draft, and he had created waves because when he was out, I think there actually was a scouting combine or at least part of one last year. And he's, he was viewed as a potential first round pick last year, Greg. I think he went in the second round to the Panthers mm-hmm. pretty early. But everyone he talked to said, look, if you think I'm a freak, I'm not even the freakiest of freaks at Penn State. And he mentioned Jason specifically. 
Um, I, I just think this is a chance for Jason really to make some money. Uh, I think Michael will draw some interest just because of the year off. People just want to see what he looks like physically. Um, they, they can always go back to his 2019 tape, but I think they'll be taking a close look at him as well. Any other thoughts, Greg, on Pro Day or, or any of the players there? I'm actually, I, I give Steven Gonzalez a lot of credit for doing this a second year in a row. He puts a lot of stuff on social media. He, he clearly hasn't given up right. on a pro career. I think he was in camp with the Cardinals at one point last year. Yes. I don't know if he, I don't know if he landed somewhere else, but to, to stay that focused, he played five years at Penn state. He, he definitely wants an opportunity. I admire kids like that. I hope he gets a long look and, you know, there's been some, there's been some guys at Penn state who have played a long time and they haven't necessarily been drafted. They've, they went the free ed, free agent route. Maybe Steven could be that guy, but I think it's impressive for him to kind of keep that dream alive. Yeah, no, he's clearly kept fighting. As you mentioned, he puts a lot of stuff on social media that's basically just asking for a chance. And, you know, we started this segment with the idea of uh, basically how many teams are going to be there. And I'm hard pressed to think that everyone, all 32 teams should have some kind of representative yeah. in state college, you would think. So, Right. What better way to give yourself, I don't want to say one final shot, but maybe your best yeah. shot to date by being uh, at a workout where there are all these uh, first round and early draft pick potential guys who uh, are bringing all these NFL scouts and talents to town. So certainly wish him well. He was a good guy to cover. The rest yeah. of these guys were too. Um, we'll see how things shake out, Bob. But no, I mean, second week of spring practice, the weather's getting nice out. And yeah, we've heard some good things about Mike Yurcich's offense so far, which, of course, that was always going to be the case. We weren't going to hear bad things a week in the practice. Yeah. But, you know, these guys clearly know. I think the one thing listening to all the guys who talked earlier this week, Bob, was, uh, you know, they had Brett and Strange said that they had 0-5 plastered around the weight room. The coaching staff did basically as a daily reminder of how poorly yeah. last season started. And if Penn State's not better this year, and we all know how tough that September slate is, but if they're not yeah. improved this year, it certainly isn't going to be for a lack of dedication to being better in the offseason because – Sounds yep. to me like these guys have all done the right things uh, really since this pandemic started and have continued to do so since. Yeah, and we should, as we take we take this on a Tuesday later this week, we are expecting to hear from Coach Franklin and maybe an assistant along with uh, maybe another player or two. They've been very good about availability, even though we can't watch them work out, understandably so. So, Greg, we're going to have the updates uh, coming uh, you know, throughout spring practice here on the blue white breakdown, looking forward to it. I'm glad the weather is nicer, but yeah, we, we should have a lot to talk about a lot to do on Thursday, Penn state's pro day, eight players, Greg will be there two or three or four of them have a chance to go pretty high yep. in the NFL draft. Micah Parsons, but it would, for him to not go in the first round, <laughs> something would have to go seriously wrong. I think Jason is probably going to go in the first round too. Pat Frymuth is, is, maybe a second round guy at the latest. I don't see him spilling into the third round. It's going to be a good showing. Hopefully they all work out well, Greg. I'm looking forward to hearing and seeing maybe how they progress and hearing from those guys. I'm sure that you are too. The fans can just kind of hang with us throughout this week and next week for daily updates on the blue white breakdown. If it's not me and Greg, uh, it'll be myself and David Jones, or it'll be Dustin Hawkinsmith, but there's going to be plenty of opportunities to provide Penn State fans, I think, with news and updates. And Craig, why don't we just close it out? Where can they where can they find us and where can they tell us we're doing an amazing job? You got it. Leave us feedback anywhere you get your audio. The Blue Light Breakdown's available on Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, and anywhere else podcasts and audio are found. Don't forget to leave us some feedback and the video version, youtube.com slash all Penn State. Of course, the stories, Bob, uh, penlive.com slash Penn State football. And like you said, there'll be plenty to talk about in the weeks ahead. 